Well, hello and welcome to day 203 of our daily Bible reading. As always, let's begin with a word of prayer. God of wisdom, as we read your word, may it be like the potter's hands on clay, shaping, molding, and refining us. Amen. Today we begin in the book of Second Chronicles and we read chapter 6, verse 12, through chapter 8, verse 10. Solomon's Prayer of Dedication Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You who have kept for your servant, my father David, what you promised to him. Indeed, you promised with your mouth, and this day have fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children keep to their way to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed that you promised to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with mortals on earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you. May your eyes be open day and night toward this house, the place where you promise to set your name, and may you heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place, and hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. May you hear from heaven your dwelling place, hear and forgive. If someone sins against a neighbor and is required to take an oath and comes and swears before your altar in this house, may you hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing their conduct on their own heads and vindicating the righteous by rewarding them according to their righteousness. When your people Israel, having sinned against you, are defeated before an enemy, but turn again to you, confess your name, pray and plead with you in this house, then hear from heaven, forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land that you gave them and to their ancestors. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, and then they pray toward this place, confess your name and turn from their sin because you punish them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and grant rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is plague, blight, mildew, locust, or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in any of the settlements of the lands, whatever suffering, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea there is from any individual or from all your people Israel, all knowing their own suffering and their own sorrows so that they stretch out their hands toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, forgive and render to all whose hearts you know according to all their ways, for only you know the human heart. Thus may they fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our ancestors. Likewise, when foreigners who are not of your people Israel come from a distant land because of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do whatever the foreigners ask of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so they may know that your name 
has been invoked on this house that I have built. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer, and their plea, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them, and give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to a land far off or near, then if they come to their senses in the land to which they have been taken captive, and repent, and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned and have done wrong. We have acted wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and soul in the land of their captivity, to which they were taken captive, and pray toward their land that you gave to their ancestors, the city that you have chosen, and the place that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer, and their pleas, maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, O oh my God, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to prayer from this place. Now rise up, O oh Lord God, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests, O oh Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your faithful rejoice in your goodness. O oh Lord God, do not reject your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for your servant David. Chapter 7, Solomon Dedicates the Temple When Solomon had ended his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. When all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down on the pavement with their faces to the ground and worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered as a sacrifice 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. The priests stood at their posts, the Levites also, with the instruments for music to the Lord that King David had made for giving thanks to the Lord, for his steadfast love endures forever, whenever David offered praises through their playing. Opposite them the priests sounded trumpets, and all Israel stood. Solomon consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered the burnt offerings and the fat of the offerings of well-being, because the bronze altar Solomon had made could not hold the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fat parts. At that time Solomon held the festival for seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from Lebo Hamath to the Wadi of Egypt. On the eighth day they held a solemn assembly for they had observed the dedication of the altar seven days and the festival seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their homes, joyful and in good spirits because of the goodness that the Lord had shown to David and to Solomon and to his people Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, he successfully accomplished. God's Second Appearance to Solomon Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive 
to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house, so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne, as I made a covenant with your father David, saying, You shall never lack a successor to rule over Israel. But if you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from the land that I have given you, and this house, which I have consecrated for my name. I will cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And regarding this house, now exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this house? Then they will say, because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they embraced other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore he has brought all this calamity upon them. Chapter 8. Various Activities of Solomon At the end of twenty years, during which Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house, Solomon rebuilt the cities that Hiram had given to him and settled the people of Israel in them. Solomon went to Hamath, Zobah, and captured it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness and all the storage towns that he built in Hamath. He also built Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars, and Baalath, as well as all Solomon's storage towns and all the towns for his chariots the towns for his cavalry, and whatever Solomon decided to build, in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, from their descendants who were still left in the land, whom the people of Israel had not destroyed, these Solomon conscripted for forced labor, as it is still the case today. But of the people of Israel, Solomon made no slaves for his work. They were soldiers and his officers, the commanders of his chariotry and cavalry. These were the chief officers of King Solomon, 250 of them, who exercised authority over the people. Romans chapter 7 verse 14 through chapter 8 verse 8. The Inner Conflict For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But, in fact, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells, dwells within me. For I know that the good does not dwell within me, that is, in my flesh. For the desire to do the good lies close at hand, but not the ability. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want... It is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to this law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched person that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am enslaved to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am enslaved to the law of sin. Chapter 8 Life in the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death for god has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit to set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace for this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to god it does not submit to god's law indeed it cannot and those who are in the flesh cannot please god proverbs chapter 19 verses 24 and 25 the lazy person buries a hand in the dish and will not even bring it back to the mouth strike a scoffer and the simple will learn prudence reprove the intelligent and they will gain knowledge well this has been the word of god and the word of life thanks be to god and we'll see you tomorrow